10 things Nerd Moon hates about board games. That's right. This is going to be our top 10 list of things we don't like about board games ever since we got seriously into the hobby space about a year or two ago. Now, this is a list of things we don't like about board games currently, but also a list of things I didn't like about it when I was growing up in the 80s with them. Now, the games we use here doesn't mean that we don't like the games. Uh, we do love the games we have here, but we just want to have fun making this list and hopefully you have fun watching this video as well. So let's get started with number 10 right now. Number 10, board game mistakes. That's right, even board games can make mistakes too. Now, if this happens in a video game, whether it's a bug or an error, the developer will create a fix, make a patch, this patch is put online. Next time you log on to the game server, it's sort of fixed automatically. And you may not even be aware there was a bug to begin with. Now, what happens if that's with a board game? Now, that's a little harder to do, right? Because there's no online component uh, per se. So this happened to us recently. This is Castle Panic, the Wizard's Tower Deluxe Edition. Now, if you flip to the back here, you can see this game is a really cool tower defense game, and we love it to death here. It does come with many miniatures, and you can see some of them here. You have this dragon here, which comes on a five-sided base, and you have this hydra, which actually is on a four-sided base. But the hydra that we got in the game here is actually a five-sided base. So this is a misprint, and if we weren't aware of the situation we may have played the entire game with a hydra having a higher point value and you know maybe be oblivious to it but it's actually a misprint and not what the game designer wanted so we uh, contacted the developer and the publisher was, was able to mail us a corrected miniature with a four-sided base however once again if you're not aware of the situation you may play the game entirely wrong. And this is not the only example, but it's just uh, one of the examples I can give you of a game error. Another error would be this game here. This is Mystery of the Abbey. Now this is the 2012 edition. So it obviously came out a long time ago, but there's actually a misprint in this game where the cards all have the same uh, number two. It's not supposed to say two on all the cards. It's actually supposed to be different numbers. And if you want to fix this game and call the publisher, well, it's too late, right? They don't make this game anymore. So if we were lucky to find a deck of cards here. This is actually a fix for the game. And you see it's a misprint on the mass cards. And to play the game correctly, you need this replacement deck. But if you got this game, maybe at a garage sale or something like that, you may not even be aware that there was a misprint in this game. And certainly, you wouldn't be able to obtain the correct card to play it. And so this, once again, is another example of a board game error. And that is one of the fallacies of this hobby. It's not easy to find or be aware of these fixes. I'm not sure how game publishers could get around this problem as some of these publishers come and go very quickly and these games get out of print very easily as well. I'm not sure what the solution is, but I just want you to be aware of you know, check their websites, check the errata, uh, check uh, game forms when you play a game. Just be aware that errors can potentially exist. Number nine, too much time to set up or tear down a game. Taking too much time to set up a game or tear it down is always a pain. And Marvel Zombies is sort of guilty of this. Now, the core game itself is not too bad, nor is X-Men Resistance. However, if you have this, expansion pack which contains team versus team mode to play this third mode you actually need components of this box that box and this one as well and man it took me over half an hour to set up that game and when we did a gameplay video of it we did make some game pay errors which we did sort of correct over time and i was thinking about reshooting the video but never did so as it took way too much time to set it up and i don't think i'll ever play that mode ever again uh yeah so that's definitely a no-no of taking way too much time to set up a game but also to tear down a game and one game guilty of that is one of our favorite games right now 
It's HeroScape. So HeroScape comes with these cool tiles and the setup does take time, but it's sort of fun to do because you're sort of building something like Lego, but to tear it down and put it away, it is a pain because these hexes, they're, they're a little fragile. So you gotta be careful with it and you can't just uh, willy nilly tear it apart or you're gonna chip these uh, fragile hexes. So anyways, Heroescape, great game, but bad tear down time and Marvel Zombies team versus team mode, definitely a pain to set up. Hopefully we never have to encounter that again. Number eight, controlling more than one hero. Well, this is Marvel Zombies and we do love the game here. However, it does contain another pet peeve of ours and that's reflected on the back of the box where you can solo this game. But if you do so, you actually have to control all four heroes and that's not immersive. We prefer a one-to-one -one ratio and there's a lot of adventure games that do this, but this does not. And we made our own custom rules to accommodate our uh, liking where we control one hero per player and I'll put a link down below for that video if you want to check it out but we find it more engaging this way so hopefully game publishers will learn how to scale their games more in the future so they will accommodate the one-to-one -one ratio that would be definitely more engaging number seven small print that's right small print now this may not bother some of you younger generations but certainly it's difficult for us older folk to read some of these cards. These are, of course, Pokemon cards. And yes, there's actually some small font here at the bottom. And that doesn't necessarily reflect gameplay, but these actually do down here. And here's the retreat value. And that's very difficult to read. You, you probably wouldn't even notice that there is text there from a distance like here. Now this is in comparison to newer generation cards, like these are Mindbug cards where the text is quite readable, even at a distance. And the other information here at the bottom, that's not as significant, like how many cards in the deck or what card number it is. So I know they haven't retained this uh, style because of what occurred uh, with the first uh, printing of these uh, cards. So they have to maintain the same style. I understand that, but yeah. There are definitely other card games and board games with cards that have small print like this. And we definitely shy away from that. And hopefully publishers will not do so anymore, especially as those game designers get older. Number six, too many tokens. Too many tokens. Boy, do we hate that here. Now this is Batman, the anime series. This is the Shadow of the Bat. And it's a cool looking board game. We love the IP. The animated Batman series is definitely a classic. And of course, this game is gonna come with many miniatures featuring the art style from the cartoon. Now, this game, unfortunately though, has nearly 400 tokens, my gosh. Now, some of these tokens could have been resolved by using dials for health or maybe a tracker board to keep score power. Certainly, you don't need all these tokens, like a token for a crouch, and a token for all, all these other actions. It's, it's too much. And so that's one reason we haven't actually played this game yet. It's gonna to be too daunting, I believe. And I'm just keeping it just for the miniatures and maybe one day we'll get them all painted up and play a game. But boy, do we hate too many tokens. Once again, there are other ways to resolve tokens by using either cards or tracker boards or dials. Uh, there are other ways to do it. So hopefully no more board games with more than 100 tokens, Number five, please. paper money. That's right, paper money. I'm sure all of you out there have a game of Monopoly and your paper money probably looks like trash now. My copy from 80 certainly did so and it's now long gone. Now I wanna show you this version of Monopoly Dungeons and Dragons as basically it is a reskin of the game and the gameplay and components are basically the same and retains paper money. Now there's another version of Monopoly Dungeons and Dragons and it's actually this one here. And this is actually uh, based more on the movie itself. But this game is actually quite good. The gameplay is a, a little bit different and more importantly, it changed the components of paper money into cardboard gold piece tokens. So that's pretty cool. Now this game was actually the first board game we gave away to promote this channel. I'm sure we have other giveaways going on right now. You can click our channel page to check that out. Now I wanna show you another game we have here in the library, and this is Supremacy. Now Supremacy is a board game that is uh, close to Risk, and it was published in 1986. This is a game I grew up with, 
And let me just show you the back of the box here. It has this very cool world map and even cooler tokens to denote naval units and army units. And you even have these mushroom clouds. So if you attack a country with a nuclear weapon, you get to place a mushroom cloud. But if there's more than 12 on the board, the game is over because of nuclear winter. Unfortunately, because this game was published in the 1986, it does retain, unfortunately, paper money as a denomination a component. Instead of using tokens or maybe even a board to track how much money you have, you have a stack of paper money. So here is my stack of paper money from the game. I guess the good thing about this game, it did provide cardboard backers for each denomination. So it kept it sort of straight and flat. If I played this game with friends, I had to pick which friend I was gonna play it with. I knew which friends were careful and which ones were not. So you can see the money still looks quite nice. It's nearly four decades old, but yeah, paper money is a bane of board games. There is only one other game we have in the library here with paper money, and it is this one here. This is Dragon Lairds. This is a game that was made by James Ward, and unfortunately he did pass away last month, and Tom Wham. Both of them are TSR D&D veterans. You can see the artwork is very stylistic of Wham. It's uh, definitely cartoony and very uh, pleasing to the eye. Now this game, unfortunately, does have paper money. So this was actually published in 2008, which makes it relatively modern, but unfortunately it does retain the byproduct of the 80s of paper money. So I do plan to open up this game. It looks like it'd be quite fun and entertaining to play. I haven't done so, but now that my daughter's older and I know she's careful with our older board games. I think I could trust her with the paper money here. My little boy though, he's quite destructive. Uh, we'll see what happens when he grows up. So paper money, yeah, the bean of the 80s, but I guess it looks cool. You know, you want to flash cash like in Miami Vice, but I don't know anyone has sleeves for paper money. i have certainly, they'll probably make some, but hopefully we never have to deal with paper money in board games in the future. Yeah. Now this all comes down to personal preference. We definitely prefer artwork over photographs. So what I have in front of me is Warhammer Quest. And Warhammer is of course a big IP and Quest is a very famous game series. Now what I have in front of me is actually the card game version. And you can see the components here. They all have nice artwork on the cards. There's no photographs. Now the bigger brothers, whether it's Cursed City or a different a variation of Warhammer Quest. They have the miniatures, a lot of tokens and stuff, but the player cards, they actually have photographs of painted miniatures to denote the characters. And yeah, I, I don't like that at all. <laughs> First of all, for if I try to paint the mini, there's probably no way I'm gonna make it look as good as a Warhammer painting professional, and so that'll bug me. But also, yeah, if I don't paint it, it's gonna just look weird. So I'd rather have them put stylized art instead. And so that's why we have this version instead. Now, that also goes back to that Monopoly Dungeons and Dragons we showed earlier. And this version, which I said was the better version of the Dungeons and Dragons Monopoly theme. Well, part of the reason why we gave this as a giveaway is even though we like this game, it does have basically a photograph of the characters. So even though we enjoy this movie quite a bit, you never know what kind of scandal one of these guys are gonna get into. And over time, the special effects will look quite dated. I'm sure all of you out there have a favorite movie that you watch, but then over time you realize, wow, the special effects are not up to par anymore. So that's why we always prefer artwork over photographs because artwork is timeless. Number three, too much space needed. If you love board games like we do here on the channel, you know space is always at a premium. This is our Days of Wonder shelf, and we have most of the top hits here. We got some extra games by them flowing on other shelves. But for the most part, they have a nice uniform look to them. They all have the same box shape, and they also have that same logo, as well as character art featured on the side. So it has a nice uniform look to it. Now, sometimes you get games like this one here, the Castle and Burgundy Special Edition. It comes in this huge rectangular shape, 
and I don't even know what to do with this box. I, I thought these boxes were long gone. Uh, same thing like these long boxes up there. You know, these were the old style 1980s shape games. And uh, yeah, I don't know what to do with them except put them on a the shelf up there. Now, Space, once again, is always at a premium. And one game guilty of this is Marvel United. Now, we love this game here. One of our favorite games, but it does take a lot of space. This is the stretch box, but we got all the other boxes down below here. And it's jam-packed as Marvel United stuff. This contains all the boxes for Season 1 and Season 2. Now, we do have Season 3 incoming, as well as DC United. So that's going to probably be the same amount of boxes here, and I don't even know where I'm going to put it. Uh, these other cabinets are already full of other games. I might have to dump them in the basement or something like that. But I guess it's a good problem to have, but also a, a bad problem. I think eventually I might have to get a third-party uh, insert to accommodate all these miniatures and cars, but we'll see in the future. Number two, Box Warping. That's right, Box Warping, another pet peeve here on the channel. So this here is, once again, Supremacy that I obtained in 1986. And of course, over four decades later, the box has warped quite a bit. You can see here how the lid bows out from the bottom of the box. So much so that I was even thinking about getting rid of this game, but I love it too much. I'm gonna definitely keep it in the collection here. But I can understand this being old, but this game, even though it's a little bit older game, we unsealed this uh, less than a year ago. And if I flip it to the back here, the box is not warped on the top or sides, but it actually has warped on this edge here. Now, this box has been stored uh, flat, and I guess these sides have been inside the bookcase, and this is the one exposed to the elements or the environment and has already warped. Now, from what I understand, warping of this uh, box occurs because the paper used on the inside and the paper used to uh, print the photograph is uh, glued onto each other. And because there are different makes and different densities, it will uh, scatter and warp over time with temperature changes and humidity. Now, we do keep all of our games in an air-controlled environment. And we do even have a small dehumidifier here just in case. And even with all that, this box still warped in less than a year. I, I can't believe it. So if you know of any way to prevent this from happening, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to learn. And number one, F-O-M-O, -O, fear of missing out. The fear of missing out. Oh boy, did we fall victim to that earlier when we got into this hobby space about a year or two ago. So this is Casting Shadows, and we went all in. And it's created by the makers of Unstable Unicorn. I have one of the figures for that game here. And that is a fantastic fun card game. And it does have really cute appealing art. So I got this uh, Kickstarter and pledged all in, partly because it did come with the vinyl figures here. And I knew this would be appealing to my daughter. So she has it all set up in her bedroom here. It's all on the shelf. And she has really geeked it out and has the acrylic figures displayed as well. Now this all looks fun and she certainly has fun playing with this stuff. However, the game itself wasn't that fantastic. In fact, we only played this game once and I don't know we'll ever play it again to be honest with you. So certainly in the future we will never go all in unless we know the game itself is great. So we have gone all in on Marvel United Season 3 and DC United, because we played Marvel United, we know what to expect and we love that game. So lesson learned, we'll never go all in anymore unless we know the game itself is good. And hopefully you learn from our experience. So thank you for watching this video, top 10 things we hate about board games. Don't get us wrong, we do love this hobby space. Obviously we do have a lot of games in front of us here. And the next video we make will be more positive. It will be uh, top 10 things we love about board games. If there is something that bothers you about board games, a pet peeve, uh, let me know in the comments down below. We might make a subsequent video about that as well. So thank you for watching, everyone. Hopefully you have a great day. Have fun with your games and keep on adventuring out there.